guys. I know you guys have been accustomed to see me with a hat on my ball head, but when I'm working on the car, that hat's only going to stay on for about 10 seconds. So this coverage is of assembly of the Fairlane suspension. Now, I know there's a whole pile of you guys that as soon as I say Ford Fairlane coverage, you don't watch the videos. But for the 300 and some people who actually watch those videos, this one is for you. So we're going to get back under the fair lane. I'm going to show you what we have done and show you what we're about to do. Okay, for all of you guys who saw all those beautiful products that we were going to put on the fair lane, uh, of course, there are no, we had to take the shock, upper shock mount out. I just put that back in. Um, one of the things that we did while it was down, I blasted these lower steering knuckles and painted them with some really good paint that you can get at Harbor Freight called um, grill and suspension paint, chassis paint. <laughs> so I don't know how you come with that combination, but yeah, it works, it's pretty good. Um, so we're gonna put the knuckle back under. Uh, I have already installed the SPC upper control arm those are really nice pieces and if you notice it has the pre um, added suspension drop as you can see those billet brackets lower the suspension down uh, I believe it's one maybe two inches I can't remember you can always check that out but it's, it gives you the Shelby drop automatically so so I've already installed those, torqued the inside bolts on that shaft before I put them in to 40 foot-pounds. And we also have installed the new ball joint, upper ball joints on that uh, that came with the kit. Also, previously, while off camera, I did install the Global West lower control arm. While I was out here, I got and put on the um, sway bar in links. I ordered those in blue. Why they came in white, I don't know. The picture had blue, that's why I ordered them, because I wanted them in blue, but they come in and they're white. So anybody knows if you're working on cars, as soon as you put your greasy handprints on those white ones, they're no longer white. We'll call them off-white now. So what we've done, we've already reattached the strut rod link i just have that loosely bolted in um, the lower ball joint actually came on that already so now we're going to go ahead and reassemble the rest of the suspension and i hope you guys who watch the footage like what you see so in case you guys are wondering does this guy actually get up under there and work on these cars yes i do i've done it all my life this is something I'm very familiar with. My very first vehicle was a 1968 Ford Mustang notchback. And I can tell you that was a very, very good car to me. Uh, let's see. Let's hit the lower control arm on here. I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute because we have another another piece that goes on that. Now this came with the upper ball joint, the SPC upper arm, and it is already ready to go. It does not have a grease fitting, so it is not really serviceable, which and that works for some people. It works for me. So we're just going to install the um, nut on there and not tighten it yet. We're just going to get everything in place on top of this um, Global West arm. There is a, uh, a spacer that they provide that will lock everything down. So let me go get that grease fitting which there is a grease fitting on the bottom of that global west arm i'm going to install that 
And once I get the spacer in, I'll put on the cotter pin. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. When they send you the arm, they send you the spacer that goes on top. And it actually, you take that off and it goes on after you slide this in. So that's how that goes. The spacer goes right on top and then the nut. And we're not gonna tighten that down yet either. We're gonna wait till we have pretty much, not everything, but most everything in place. While I had all of this down, I did order Oh, here's the spacer. There it is. Woohoo! I try to keep everything in the same place. That's why my wife will come out. all that stuff all over the garage. And I said, don't move it. Don't move it because it's in a certain place. I keep everything. I mean, I know this looks like there's a mess everywhere, but I'm pretty organized when it comes to putting this stuff on and back together. So, now that we have all of that in, one of the other things that I did order while we have all of this down is a new outer tie rod link. And it has a hole for a grease fitting. Now the one that's under there, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, the one that's under there. does not have a grease fitting. Is it still okay? I believe that it's still in good shape. If you move that, it's pretty tight. It's not, it doesn't have any play in it. I could conceivably put that back in there, but since I have everything here and I'm taking everything out, I wanted to go ahead while I have the opportunity and replace that lower control, that lower tie rod in. So I'm gonna loosen these, the the bolt that locks it in, and then I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna count the turns, and I'm gonna measure the distance so that I can put it back the same distance that it was, so that when I reassemble everything, the, um, the alignment won't be completely so far out of kilter that, you know, that it's out of kilter. So, let's go ahead and put this on. Keep my little scissors out here. Go ahead and install this grease fitting right now. Put that in there. And get that installed. And that doesn't have to be super tight. Let's take the old handy pliers and just like I said, that doesn't have to be super tight. Just doing nothing but allowing you to be able to put grease in there. And that's all ready to go. Gonna lube those threads with WD-40. Just because, and I've already pre-lubed the old one. So let's climb under there and Get that bad boy off. That may be loose enough to turn it, yes. Okay, we're gonna count the turns. Okay. One turn. Two turns. Three turns. Four turns. 30, 31, 32, 33. 33 turns. So, 
That's how many turns we're going back in. Let's verify that that's the exact same length. And it is 33 turns. So let's start it in. 30, 33. There it is. So right now, we're gonna lock that back down. I remember back in the day before I had these powered wireless hoseless tools, we had the good old fashioned wrenches that we used. <laughs> and nothing wrong with using some power tools if you got them available to you, but I didn't always have it that way. So this is a treat. Thank God for the little treats of life. Oh, as soon as I put my hands on them. Matter of fact, let's just use this while I'm here just to hold that. Rather than getting all the way back up. I know you guys want me to hurry up. Hurry up already, Mr. Man. Let's tighten that back up. That doesn't have to be super tight. You gotta understand all that is doing is locking that in place. So now this piece is now also ready to go back onto our knuckle. We're gonna slide that up into place. And again, we are not going to tighten that yet. We're just gonna put the nut on it so that it's in its proper position okay so now it's looking like a suspension amen yes all right before we go any further i'm gonna put that other grease fitting in the lower global west control arm while we're being laying down here Try to keep these things all together when I open one thing I have one of these boxes over here that I put all my little loose parts in so I don't lose anything because it's sure easy to lose them when you're under here and you got a hundred million tools you're going in a hundred million directions so let's go ahead and put that in some of the uh, new suspension pieces that they have out are way better than the old ones so they don't require greasing when they get that old you can just replace them such is the case on the upper arms used to be and, and you guys are going to see a picture that i share that i will share with you of the amount of raw grease and grit that came out of it it took me literally three days to clean out all the cloud then caked in over greasing of those inner control arm bushings from way back when. I would venture to say that the grease and stuff that has been in there has probably been in there for 40 years because you know this car is a 1966. And by the way, I turned 58 on yesterday <laughs> and I was born in 64. So 56 years worth of grease was down in those things and I'm telling you what that is the most nasty job one will ever had I had to literally take a <clears throat> a putty knife a chisel a wire arm and clean every clog of that grease out of there and believe me when I say that it was nasty that is an understatement okay so now we have all the suspension pieces in except for the coil over and the spring now one of the things I'm going to warn you guys about is this 
these coilovers are a hybrid coilover. So the bottom part is small enough to fit on your coilover shock and the upper part will fit back into the stock position. The issue that that creates is this spring insulator. What spring insulator do you get for an aftermarket spring that will fit up in there like it's supposed to because it's the same amount of area even though these springs are a little bit smaller at the top. What's going to fit in there? And I'll tell you the mistake that I made. A $45 mistake trying to get the best stuff and sometimes that doesn't work. The mistake that I made, I bought these and these are, they're made in China, China, but they're, they have like a Drake part number. And these look beautiful. They're polyurethane. You think that's the best. And it probably is if you're using stock springs. Unfortunately, I'm going to show you. Well, I don't have one of the stock springs available. What would have happened? These will fit the old spring, but they will not fit these new ones. Now, if you look at that, the hole is still the same size that's going up in there like it's supposed to, but these would not fit. They'll fit my old spring, but they won't fit these. So I had the brilliant idea, since I'd already paid $45 for these two pieces of rubber, by the way, maybe I'll just cut them, and as long as there's enough of that inside there, it'll still fit well, this part and this part was so thick that these would not fit in there. So if you're going to get the spring insulators, don't get these beautiful polyurethane Drake ones if you have Viking coilover shocks because you're going to make a $45 mistake or either you will return them. If I had not cut them, I could have returned them, but oh, I'm going to make it work. Fortunately, the stock spring insulators, now they're not as nice as those, but they fit. Those were about $11. So, yeah, sometimes when you're trying to get the best stuff, you pay more than you should. So, this is our beautiful Viking double adjustable coilover shop. And I'm not going to put these completely in right now, but I want to show you how and where they fit. And then in a little bit after I get them back, because there's some things that we have to do to these to make sure that they will install properly and that we'll be able to get everything done. Now they come with this washer on top of here. This is how this comes uh, unassembled. The adjuster, the smaller, the wider tooth adjuster goes on the bottom and the other adjuster goes on the top. So this, this is basically a lock nut. This adjusts your ride height. And I believe this particular setup is good for between uh, stock to uh, three inches lower. I'm not going three inches lower, but I am gonna be lower than I was. So I'm going to what I'm going to do, and I just have these pre put on here so I have all the pieces ready to go. I'm going to show you how these fit on here, and then we're going to take a break because this whole area has to be lubed with um, anti-seize. If you don't, you're making a big mistake, and believe me, I know from experience because on my Fox body, I put coilovers on it, did not put the anti-seize, and there's another item that I'm going to show you that you're going to need. You're going to make all this work. So, you got that off. This will mount on top of the shock in the engine compartment. The spring will sit right on top of here, just like any other coilover. And then, what you will do, take this off. Actually, I can leave the nuts in so you guys will be able to see. If I can position this light. Another way you guys can see. Uh, I hope you know. 
That's not gonna work. Anyway, can you guys see? Oh, I can. There we go. I can see that. All right. So these will fit up into the stock shock mount, straight up into the hole. Push the suspension down a bit. These bones don't move like they used to, but that's all right. I'm still moving. That's how these are going to fit up in there. Lower this back down some more. And you can always crank these up. And then what you, what I'm doing, what you shouldn't do is crank those up like I did a while ago. Leave them as low as possible. Because you can always crank them up after you get the coil over in place. So that up into the shock hole. And I also extended the uh, shock rod, which I shouldn't have done. Let me push it in just a little bit. And then these bolts will fit directly into your upper, your upper control arms. I'm just gonna sit these in here for now. Just for illustration, and that's how they will fit up in there. Then once you get everything installed, you can tighten them up. You can tighten these shocks, and what you'll do is tighten these up, the shock mounts on the bottom and at the top. Then you can move the rest of this stuff around and tighten it up. But these are double adjustable. I think it says something like 136 settings that you can do with these things. But that's basically how it fits. So we're going to take all of the, well, not all, just the coilovers back down because we're going to coat that whole shaft with anti-seize. And then what also you will need, and I'm going to tell you this from experience, don't try to do without them. Okay, guys. What you will need is something that in the past I have learned that you definitely need them. And they are roller bearings. Let me turn around and show you what I'm talking about. When you put pressure, when you put pressure on those springs, if you're going to adjust them or be able to adjust them, this is what you need. Now they offer it as an option. Let me tell you this. To me, they're not optional. These are a must. And that bushing that you saw already on the shot, what you will do, and these are the rollerized bearings that go on there. And what you do, you put this on top of the bushing that's already on there. Now you're gonna put anti-seize on all of this and the bottom surface of that. You're gonna put this on top of the bushing that's already there and then sandwich this on top of that. So you have a rollerized surface and it allows your adjustment to be super, super easy. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm a little bit off here because what you'll have is, this is one of, well actually this is off of one of the other shocks. So yeah, that's how it goes. This is the bottom piece off the other shock. You put one of these down on top of that you put the roller bearing <coughs> excuse me you put the roller bearing sandwiched between the actual lower this already comes with then take one of these they're a little bit thicker that goes directly on top of that all of that with anti saves on it so when you go to turn those wrenches to adjust that shock this is rollerized i'm telling you it runs just as smooth as silk so that's the same thing you're going to do with these okay so you have one on the bottom. Matter of fact, I could be wrong. No, I was wrong. The other shock already has the um, the lower one on. So you sandwich these. These come. This is a sandwich. Let's pretend this whole thing is a sandwich. And this is what you'll do. Put your bread, your meat, your bread. Bread, meat, bread. Does that make it simple? Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take those 
shocks back out. Before you're doing that, I'll show you what it looks like once it gets all back installed, but I'll coat that entire surface. To, actually, if you just do the part um, towards, I would say the lower half of that with uh, uh, anti-seize, and I'll show you what I'm gonna be using. This is what I am using. Need a lot of that stuff. Permatex Anti-Seize Lubricant. Comes in this neat bottle and it has a, a, um, a brush on the end of this cap. So you can just coat that entire lower half of the coilover. Then you're gonna coat these, put them in, and install the entire assembly. So that's pretty much it for the suspension of what we're gonna to show today. On the next video, you'll see I'll have this side installed. Um, we'll tighten everything down and we'll get out and ride. I can tell you this, this entire setup is so much lighter. It's stronger because these are tubular, they're, they're tough. Even the lower, they are way better than the stock stuff. So we're gonna put all that back together and I'm gonna take you guys for a ride. And if you've been tuning in, you know we also the rear end, and I have made a decision on what center section to go with. I found one that's actually affordable, and some of you guys who say buy U.S. products, I get that. But this product that I'm going to um, put on there actually comes from, uh, I believe it's manufactured in Australia. So, and I like Australia. The the easy the thing you guys need to know about parts that come out of Australia. The cars that they have in Australia, they have had, and I don't quote me on this, but I think they still have a car that is called the Ford Falcon. Now, all of you guys who are as old as me know that the Ford Falcon came out in, what, 62, 63? They have had a version of the Falcon a long time. The old suspensions was in their car way longer than it was here. So they actually did a lot of research and development on a lot of these um, outdated parts and were actually you know putting out some really good stuff and they still do as a matter of fact um that um corrects some of the outdated technology that we have had of course here in the united states we moved on to bigger and quote better things so yeah they have some great parts uh, i use manufacturers and, and you know i'm telling you a lot of this stuff that that we say it's it, oh it's u.s parts it's got a, a lot of these parts as soon as you open them up even that shot uh, insulator, the spring insulator. That thing, as soon as you open it, it says made in China. So, I mean, you can leave it or take it, but eventually, as we found out with these chips that we can't keep in our cars, some of this stuff has got to come from China. So, it is what it is. All right, guys. That's all I'm going to show you. You, found, you, you Ford Fairlane people who watch my videos, I appreciate it. And I'm still going to put that stuff out for you. I'm still going to do the Maverick stuff, though. Not stopping the Maverick stuff. But for all you guys who asked what it was like to install that stuff, that's it. Pretty much installs just like normal. The only difference being instead of having to use a spring compressor. And uh, that was, a, I won't say a nightmare, but it was a, it's sketchy. When you have to use one of the spring compressors to, to compress one of those old springs that's rusted and get them out of the car. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sketchy because you compress compress that spring and those things if they fly out of there They can literally kill you uh, I had to do a little modified thing. I actually compressed them Low <laughs> pop the um, upper control arm bolts out and then the thing just flew out to the side not flew out Now that sounds really dangerous. It it popped out to the side. It didn't hurt anything But I learned that after doing the first one so That's where we are Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.